This is day 50 of the search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and there is still no sign of the missing plane. This morning, with almost 100% of the target search area completed and no clues found, experts fear a wider hunt could take years. Joining us now is Mark Rosenker, CBS News national transportation safety expert and former chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Mark, good morning. Good morning. We had all hoped we'd be seeing you under different circumstances. They went all in on this submersible. No clues. What's next? Well, if you can imagine what they were looking at is a giant dartboard created from information coming from the Inmarsat, coming from the Boeing performance data, coming from the radar tracks, and finally with the pings. They went for the bullseye. Unfortunately, there was nothing in the bullseye. But this is a very large target, a very large device that they're going to have to take a look at and then understand where it may well be next. This was the most promising lead, though, Mark, and, and if we're not seeing anything here, where do, where do you go next? Well, they stay on this dartboard. This dartboard is very large, and it was created from all of this good calculations. At least this is what they believe to be good calculations right now. What happens at this point in terms of how they'll continue searching? Does it continue underwater? Do we go to the air? What's the next step? I think you're going to see, at least this is what the... Uh, leaders of this investigation have indicated that they're going to kind of pull back on the aviation side. They're going to put all of their efforts into looking underwater and trying to find this aircraft on the seabed. How do they do that, Mark? I mean, this has got to be a long and very tedious process. It is going to be a very long, tedious, frustrating, and obviously a very expensive process. They're going to need specialized equipment. This Bluefin 21 is good, but it's not the answer. They're going to need other things as well. I read somewhere that Malaysia will have to now file a report on what they know, but I'm just curious, what could possibly be in this report? They've been so tight-lipped. They've actually created this report and sent it to ICAO, which is the International Civil Aviation Organization, which really governs the, the uh, search process through its Annex 13. Uh, this report is basically factual. You will not find any analysis whatsoever in it. It will talk about the aircraft itself. It will talk about the facts as they know them. But you will not have any very, very many answers at all. At any point, you, you, did the searchers step back from this process or take a break, Mark? Or is this is something you just got to stay with for a long period of time until you, you get some kind of break? There will be various times where it appears nothing is happening. There will be shifts of equipment, shifts of crews. Mm -hmm. uh, if we take a look at what, in fact, uh, we saw through the Air France examination, Air 447, there was really, of the two years that it took to actually bring up the black boxes, there was only really six months of real search and recovery going on during that two-year period. Interesting. What about these family members? I mean, that, some of them have staged sit-ins outside the embassy. Where are they left in all of this? Who will give them answers? They are looking for answers. They deserve answers. The government needs to give them the answers. But unfortunately, no one has answers right now. We, Mark, you say that, that this Bluefin 21 is, is, is not enough equipment. Is there, is there equipment out there that can do the job better? There are other pieces of equipment which will probably be brought in. The uh, Australian Prime Minister has made a commitment to stay with this as long as it takes in order to find this aircraft. The U.S. is going to be there as long as it takes with their support. Clearly, the NTSB is going to be involved as an accredited representative offering their technical expertise when they finally get something. But right now, we are just absolutely stumped on where this aircraft can be. How will history remember this, this whole incident, you think? Probably the longest, most expensive, most mysterious investigation of aviation ever. Mark Rosenker, thanks so much for being with us this morning.